uh, driving around today with Vernon's mayor, uh, Akbal. Um, we were kind of talking on the way here. What what are you referred to as? Is it just, do we call you Akbal? Do we call you Mr. Mun? Do we call you the Honorable Mayor? Yeah, there's many phrases that other people have used as well, too. But, <laughs> um, what do you the, 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 the rule, the actual, uh, the uh, protocol is that uh, when you're at the civic, uh, in a civic building, uh, it's your mayor or your honorable uh, worship or, you know, those kind of taglines. But as I tell my friends who'd like to call me your worship all the time, um, to um, just call me Akbal. I said, I have no problem with that, guys. And, you know, it's, um, it's something that uh, is normal. It, I might, it, se what separates me from anybody else, like you, Sean, is just the title. I mean, we're both <laughs> we're both human. It doesn't bother me any. When I owned a restaurant, you know, I'd take out the garbage, and people would look at me like, "Oh, the owner's taking out the garbage." Well, what? what it has to be done. Yeah. You know what? If yeah. I can do it, I'll do it as quick as I can, and it's done, and no one else has to worry about it. So, head it was janitor too. Yeah, head, it didn't matter. Whatever yeah. needed to be done, it was done. So. Well, what brought you to the city? Well, actually, uh, was 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 work, and uh, I came up in 1992 to look into an investment opportunity in the Wendy's franchise up here. And uh, you know, like what I saw with uh, the summer, I came up in the summer, so it was nice and it was hot. And I went, wow, I could live here. Uh, coming from uh, New Westminster, you know, Vancouver area, um, took the leap and uh, moved up here. Didn't uh, know anybody up here at the time, but uh, I said, you know what? It's a great place to, looks like a nice, quaint, small town. I'm coming. Nice. Well, how long were you uh, with Wendy's? So I was with Wendy's five years prior to the, before I came up. So I was six years prior and then the 20 years uh, up here in the Okanagan. And we ran restaurants from uh, Penticton to Kamloops. Yeah, and in that time, you've done a lot with the community, right? Well, you know, when you, when you work uh, as an owner in a community and you run a business, there's no way actually around it. You want to give back because the people who come to your business are your customers. They're the ones who support you. So the easiest way to tell them that you actually do give a, you know, big big care about the community is to give back to the community. So we used to sponsor, uh, we started with sponsoring uh, all the kids' soccer from age 10 under. Um, and then we got into the rep soccer as well. So every kid in our uh, community were communities wore uh, little Wendy shirts right and that was our that was our form of advertising at the time we thought we're never going to compete with McDonald's so we'll uh, we'll do the big advertisement we'll have these kids wear their shirts around so every year a kid got to keep that shirt yeah there was that wall board there of yeah all we the teams yeah all the teams or... yeah, yeah yeah so you know you had 180 teams up on the wall and we used to call it our wall of fame where the kids could come in and they could look at the, themselves on the wall and they get excited about that, right? Gee, I'm, you know, I'm somewhere else rather than home. I'm so, right by the ketchup. Yeah, so it was, it was good. It was good. And, we, of course, we ran the Wendy's Dream Lift as well, too, that sent, uh, you know, uh, kids to Disneyland who had life-threatening illnesses or se severe disabilities. So that was a charity uh, that uh, we ran it one day. We gave us all, all the money uh, that we raised on that day, not a dollar of a certain product, but every cent that we brought in that day was given to send kids to Disneyland. So... That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we had seven flights that left the interior, and, and it was local kids. It wasn't, you know, a lot of charities you give, and I'm not saying charity, any kind of form of charity is bad, but a lot of them, the money goes, uh, you know, out of province, and it may go to the headquarters, and they give you the money for, from there. Our money stayed within the community. Well, that's awesome. Well, what kind of uh, growth are you looking forward to seeing in this community, actually? Well, I, I think that it started again, uh, you know, um, We've got, uh, you know, Cal Tire North is being built as an amenity. We um, were talking about uh, arts, new arts and culture center. We've had the Hamlets was just built, and uh, the second phase of that is a 10-story uh, tower, which uh, will be uh, for residents, senior residents, but it'll be the largest uh, building in, uh, in terms of height in Vernon. So we've had a, got another project coming up, the hub, which has already started in behind... Uh, Nona and uh, you know we're looking at uh, there's another site for Legion which uh, someone has bought up and wants to develop uh, you know retail commercial and then residence up top we're trying to increase the density in the downtown core and I think that's gonna happen with all these projects coming aboard yeah because you're leaning towards a lot of uh, business down residential up kind of yeah and that, that that model has always been proven effective you don't have to increase your infrastructure by doing that 
therefore the cost of the taxpayer is uh, you know not increased mm -hmm. is there a plan on building uh, like more parkades or more developing more parking or? You, you know I, I, I know that's always come up as an issue and I will be honest I've lived here um, not that I parked a lot on uh, you know I parked a lot in downtown Vancouver but I honestly believe there's no trouble finding a parking space in this community. The trouble is that I do believe we become accustomed to being lazy and walking the two blocks that we have to get somewhere. Um, we have a lot of big events in the downtown core, Sunshine Festival, Downtown Light Up. It's funny, when we have those events, I've never heard anybody complain about parking. Yeah. Yet during a regular day, people complain about parking all the time. And I think it's in this uh, mindset that we have to find that parking space right out front if we don't we consider there's no parking in the downtown core but you know we when we drive around today i can show you there's lots of parking everywhere uh, and it's it's not as bad if you have to walk uh, five minutes that shouldn't be uh you know a big hazardous to your health so. i hate to say this my first trip to the states was uh, probably about three years ago and it was to a seahawks game wow yeah it's only three years ago yeah wow gas is gas prices went up yeah, yeah, it's true. They did. Well, it's funny, you know, you talk gas prices. Look, we were at 138.9, what, two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. And every second day, it's dropped a cent. Oh, really? <laughs> we're at 120.9 now. But every day, it's been dropping. A, like, every second day, it drops a cent. And it's, it's kind of interesting in a way because you kind of go, hmm, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that no lawyer has said, you know what, you know, got together with other lawyers and said, we should sue uh, the government of Canada for collusion because how do you... The, the, the actual gas price of a barrel of oil hasn't changed that much. No. And you always have heard all the excuses about, oh, well, it's gone up because, you know, the price of oil has gone up and daddy, all this. But, you know, now now they use the, well, refinery costs have gone way up. Okay, mm -hmm. so what what was the difference from two weeks ago at a dollar thirty eight nine to now dollar twenty nine? I see nothing in the price of a barrel of oil that would say that the price needs to fluctuate that much. Yet it happens. Yeah. And, and, and the real issue is, you know, it's it's it probably is they're all probably get together and say okay we got to make our money and uh, that's what they do i wouldn't be surprised if it jumps up again in uh week before christmas yeah oh it, yes yeah. every long weekend we look for it every long weekend and it happens religiously it happens every it didn't happen this july long weekend or august long weekend but it does typically happen every long weekend because people know they know the people got to drive and i i get it i mean it's like um you know i saw that little story on calgary today uh the um uh, tampon story where they were at the Calgary airport and some lady left a box of tampons in uh, a bathroom and wrote on it say I can't believe that this box of tampons cost $16 well what it was was they'd run out of tampons in the dispenser so this lady had to go buy a box and she only obviously needed one but she left the rest of the box there for everybody else but when the dispenser was filled up again she went back to the store, somebody went back to the store and found out that the actual price of the tampons dropped to $6.25. So it's a, it's a supply and demand thing, right? Yeah. So here we are talking about tampons while we're driving around burning, yeah. right? But, but I thought that was, a, it, it's an interesting way to look at things well, that no, yeah. everything's supply and demand. If there's a large, if there's large uh, demand for it, the prices will go up regardless. Uh, that, 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 and well, that's real what's estate is no different. Real estate is no different. That's what's happened with housing. And I know people keep saying the bubble's going to burst, the bubble's going to burst. I don't ever think the bubble's going to burst. Well, when you've got the, you know, the interest rates creeping up, it's a good sign that the economy has strength. Yes. Uh, we didn't see that creep up back in 2007, eight when that bubble did burst. Yeah. But we're on a totally different plane now too. With, yes. Um, and this is a destination. Right, there's yeah, you'll always get people here. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and there's certain things that you're always going to do. People are always going to drive. I know, uh, you know, we look what I think by the year 2050, you'll see very few gas stations around anymore. Uh, you'll see a lot of electric cars. I mean, some, some of the companies have already, Volvo is one who's already said, you know what, we will not be producing any uh, gasoline powered vehicles come 2030, I think it is, or 2025. So, you know, some of these big auto makers have already decided you know what i'm going where everybody else is going yeah so you know we as a city will look at uh, you know what we can do to uh, be be just as green um do we 
bring in something to the bylaws to uh, deal with um, having charging uh, at least the power available to charge a vehicle at home. Put putting the outlets, making exactly, it part of your yeah. You know, yeah. You know, these these are simple things to do, but unless you think of them now, you know it may be a way of a selling feature in the future. Well, so the green initiatives are always a good thing. I mean, if the city is adopting green initiatives and it's forward moving, right? Correct. That's pretty good. You didn't stumble once on that word initiative either. That was well Oh, done, I know. Man. I had it written down and I practiced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
we're in our fifth, sixth year now. Uh, we have four more years, and uh, by then, we'll, our infrastructure within the city will be all caught up. There was times in the past where we had taxes zero percent, so we did nothing. Mm -hmm. When you do nothing, that's you know people talk about how the condition of uh, your infrastructure and your uh, buildings get to the way they do is because you don't put any money into them. So some of the decisions that uh, this council and last council have made is to move forward on a lot of projects and, and spend the money. And I always had a line in business that was you got to spend money to make money. Mm -hmm. And uh, not that the city's in the job to make money, but if we if we be proactive that cost down in the long run is not going to be that much to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this year we approved another six officers for the RCMP. Um, uh, you know, I haven't had anybody send me an email saying it's wrong, but you know, that's a big cost. That's a uh, million dollars, and but it's for the safety of the community. Yeah. Uh, fire service is another one that we've moved forward with and said we have to replace some of the older equipment. We just can't, if you don't have a plan to move forward on, on things, it, everything crumbles and that's what's happened within the community. The biggest question I always get and I don't mind saying is people ask me all the time, you know, why are you tearing the pick arena down? I said, because it was never looked after. It was never a city of Vernon building to look after. It was a RDNO function to look after, mm -hmm. just like a lot of other things. And uh, One of the big things we've done is also take the parks back into Vernon. So we have control of all the parks. So we will decide what happens within the parks area. I mean, we're, we're working on all, you know, Camp Lorbert, but this year we took, you know, the Marshall Fields, uh, Paddle Wheel Park, uh, Kin Beach, and the D&D &D grounds. That will come back into the city. So the city will be able to say, do we need to do some extra work here? Let, let's do it then to, to keep it where it is. Um, I mean, the rail trail was a big one for in the last few years making the decision. Uh, I know sometimes, you know, we had a few comments, people saying, well, there's not an inch of the rail trail in Vernon, so why is the city of Vernon involved? Because we are the biggest fundraiser, the f biggest funder of that. Um, so a 68.3% of that funds come from Vernon. But we believe in it, and we believe it will be a truest draw for, this, for, the, for our community here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's we, we all believe it's important. So, Nice. Well, you're saying the city's not in the in the business of making money. It's also not in the business of losing money either. No, you know, and, and a lot of people don't understand how municipalities work. Um, first of all, uh, a lot of stuff does get downloaded by provincial and federal governments to municipalities because we're the easiest ones to get a hold of. Very easy for to get a hold of us, right? But um, municipalities have to, uh, when they do their budgets, they have to have a balanced budget. Uh, provincial and federal governments don't. Yeah. Now, there's something that people could press on is why doesn't the provincial government have to have a balanced budget? I see no reason why not. So why not? But municipalities, by law, have to have a balanced budget when it's approved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and <laughs> it, it, it's it, it, like I said, a lot of people don't <laughs> yeah, know. I, 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 you know, I didn't get into politics to say that I was going to, you know, be the big chief for the rest of my life. I got into politics. I want to learn. I can tell a lot of people how to approach things, you yeah. know, when, when you're approaching city and how to deal with stuff. The people of the city do their job. They have to do their job on a black and white basis. A lot of people always complain about, well, why can't we just do this? Because that's not the process. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're, if you're working at a retail shop, you know, and the customer comes up and says, well, this button's fallen off this thing. I want a 10% discount. That's not the cashier's job to do that. They, they can't make that decision. It's just the same thing that goes on at the city. You're asked after, you know, well, why can't we do this with our variants? It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be <laughs> legally done because you're talking about land, property, and most, most of it comes through that. But people want to make their own rules, and I understand it. And the best analogy I use is when I was in the restaurant industry and we used to make a, a, a mistake on a burger, let's say put mayonnaise on it if the customer doesn't mayonnaise, it was very easy for me to fix your mistake. I'd say, here, here you go, here's a new one, it's got no mayonnaise on it, you walk away happy. Here someone comes to me and says, well, why do I have to, why, do, why can I only have two and a half stories in this area? Well, that's because that's what it says under the OCP. Well, why can't you change it? Because then we have to treat everybody else the same. You can walk away, you're still not happy. Even though we've told you why, you're still not happy because mm -hmm. you honestly believe you are right. Yeah. And that's the difference between politics and any, any other job is people honestly believe, doesn't matter what you tell them. You could, yeah. you could show them in writing. They believe they are right and not what the city is doing. Mm -hmm. So 
I get it. You know, I don't try to get too upset about it, right? Uh, I mean, I recently had a woman calling me. She said some lady was looking through her window, business window, and, you know, she, why are these, as she called them, rubby dubbies in the area? And I said, well, what would you like me to do? She said, well, you need to get rid of them. Okay, what would you like me to do? We, legally, we just can't go and ask them to leave. It's against the law. And I said, that law is not made by municipalities. That law is the human charter of rights made by the federal government. Yeah. And we abide by those. And I said, provincial governments, and I was explaining, and she just kept saying, well, it's all your fault. And I was like, wow, <laughs> like, really? Yeah. And I was like, what? but but, but that, that happens. You know, yeah. we've had that a lot. I just... You don't even want to listen to what I have to say. Just go and babble. Give me the verbal diarrhea. That's great. I just sit there and listen. I go, okay, great. But this is what I'm telling you. Love to help you, but give me a salute. What would you like me to do? Well, when you yeah. sit when you sit in a chair, you know, there's instant opinions that are thrown out, right? Instant opinions. Like, it doesn't matter what what uh, what's going on. Like, nobody knows you. Nobody knows what anything about you. And then there's an instant opinion. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of... No, it, it's fine. And I, like I said, I get it. It's a, yeah. You know, I try to use the analogy with people. I say, hey, most everybody's passionate about things. And so, uh, you know, I'm sitting here with you. you. You may be a Toronto fan. You may be a Boston fan. And I may be a Montreal fan, right? We know, yeah. well, Leon's a Toronto fan. But anyways, um, but we all we all passionate about hockey. Yeah. You know what I mean? We can we can <clears> sit there and yell and scream at each other when a game's going on when our two teams are playing. That's that's all fine and dandy. But at the end of the, end of the game, guess what? We're done with it. And the same thing should be here is people are all passionate about the city. Everybody has their different ways the way they want to run the city. That's great. I have no problem with that. But at least try to provide solutions what you think could work rather than just saying that this is wrong. Okay. Yeah. Why is it wrong? Yeah. Because you think it's wrong. That, that's what mm -hmm. everybody stops at. And you're like, okay, you know, you don't, I don't understand it. I just kind of go, okay, well, that's fine. That's your yeah. opinion. And guess what? Our opinion as a council, we decided to move this direction. Yeah. You know, even if, you know, it, and it is, it's not just the mayor. I have one vote, one of seven. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and you know, I've been on the other side when we've been defeated on motions and whatnot, but we decide collectively. And that's why it's always good to have people with different backgrounds sitting on council because everybody's making the decision what they believe is right. Those councillors all work hard, paid little, work hard to make sure that they are making decision based on what they believe is right for the community not what they believe is right for themselves, but what's best for the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not everybody's gonna agree with that. I mean, Richard Roque asked me a question the first time he became mayor. He says, what do you think now? And I said, you know, Richard, I knew this coming in. I said, you know, I think, you know, what I did with Wendy's and what I did in the community, I said, 95% of the people probably liked me back then. I said, I said, as of today, Richard, only 50% of people like me. Those are my friends. And I said, you know, the people I know, and I said, they'll always be my friends. So I have no problem with that. I said, the other 25% of people will like me, depending on how I choose to move what direction and jump on and off. And I said, automatically, I'm now hated by 25% of the people. Mm -hmm. I said, I get that. I, I have no problem with it, mm -hmm. right? But, but pe what people don't understand is you, you are not doing it to, for yourself. You're doing it for the community, right? So yeah. and that, that's the hardest part. But yeah, if there's been some phone calls, you just sit back and just listen, and that's what you can do. That's the best thing to do. Listen, get, give them time to vent, and go, okay, how do I fix this? And you're not always going to fix everything. Yeah. No, that's a good point. A lot of armchair quarterbacks, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that difference between conversation and bitch, right? Yeah. Conversation is this. Bitch is just that. It's yeah. just and I don't, mind, I don't mind the bitching, but people need to understand you're dealing with people. You're not, you're not dealing with, you know, you can come in, something, there's going to be mistakes made. No one's going to be perfect, right? It's your job. So it's jobs are available for kids. I think kids need to learn that responsibility. And in the restaurant jobs aren't bad jobs to start at, right? So yeah, they, teach, they teach you responsibility. They, they teach you to learn and, uh, you know, work with the general public. So yeah, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of job opportunities in this town. Yes, oh, there is. There yeah. is. And you know what? Do I agree with the $15 wage? I don't. Um, I think that's going to take jobs off the table for a lot of people as well, too. Um, I think there should be a uh, graduated wage between uh, students, students meaning under the age of 18, 18 and under, and adults. Mm -hmm. um, because I know a lot of businesses out there, if they have somebody working for them now who are making, you know, let's say they could be there for 10 years and they're making $15 an hour now. When the wage goes up to $15, 
they're not going to go appropriately up to 20. They'll probably go to 17. Yeah. So now you got a student who's worked his first job coming in at 15, and you got a person who's worked there for 10 years making 17. To me, is that fair? Not even close. And, and that's the issue here, is mm -hmm. no one's looking at the bigger picture. And what will happen is some of those jobs will disappear, and there will be a lot of businesses who will lose their long-time employees because they can't pay, afford to pay. They can't jump the wage another $4 for their long-time employees. It's just not going to happen. Right? And the other thing that's not looked at is the wage. How, how will that affect pricing? So if a combo at a restaurant costs you $10 and you just increase the wage by four bucks an hour for all your employees, what, what the businesses will do is they'll take yeah. the, how much is this costing me at the end? If it's costing me $5,000 extra for yeah. my employees, they're gonna build it back into their pricing so it doesn't cost them anything. So in the, in the long run, everything's just gonna appropriately cost more. But not only will it cost more, everything will cost more everywhere you go. It's a sliding scale. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But because everything will cost more, in the end, you're going to pay more. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, not, you're, you're going to be back in the same scenario, but in a worse situation because you won't be, be close to making the amount of money to pay for everything else. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. all, there's all those jobs at the bottom you know, that people talk about, minimum wage jobs, there's, that's the, 70% of the population works in those jobs. Yeah. So how are you going to fix that? Cameras to the city there. Yeah, the city's like three minutes away. Yeah. Plus, we got the mayor, so we're just gonna speed. Speed. That, <laughs> well, get get you off the hook, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, there's there's one that you just brought up. Uh, you know, besides paying, paying for the RCMP, which it's mandated by the province, the municipalities do. We don't tell the RCMP what to do. Mm -hmm. No. It's a federally mandated. Uh, situation and I mean we can say hey we'd like to see this we'd like to see that whether they do or not depends on them yeah <laughs> they're not run by municipalities well I think your point there regarding the 40,000 is actually exponentially larger you know you look at Armstrong per se we did not pass the indoor arena and say the sports complex because there was so many people looking and saying you know what well Vernon's still only 15 minutes down the road. Their pool is fine. So we don't need to have our own indoor pool as well as Vernon having their indoor pool. There was talk about uh, you know, making the Centennial Hall bigger for arts. Well, Vernon just put in the big art complex there. So we are a satellite or well, well, a yeah. suburb of Vernon now where it's... And, and the same, same goes you know, with this, all this street entrenched people, if you want to call it that, seems to be the new term, but the homeless situation. You know, people, why there is there so many in <coughs> Vernon? It's because they come from a surrounding area. Yeah. Because we have the services. There's not one community which within, besides Kelowna and Kamloops, there's not another community here, which includes them, that has any services. Yeah. So where do you think, uh, they're not dumb. They're going to go where they can get fed, where they can find shelter. That's why they come to Vernon and, yeah you know they're close to services downtown that's why they you know when people people honestly thought that when they came out of the um, when we you know moved them from Polson Park that they were gonna disappear yeah it's like really like where do you think these people were gonna go they're they're human they have they're still gonna stay in the community where are they gonna move to you know whether it's unfortunate or fortunately I think they moved to an area in our community where they were seen and then people realize, look, this is, you know, this is, people thought, wow, this all of a sudden just appeared. No, they were all in Polson Park. I mean, the numbers of the homeless, when you look at them, were larger in 2007, 2008. And I, I know people don't, don't understand that, but it was, the numbers have been lower, but as communities grow and as more people come in and as more people can't, um, you know, afford to live in expensive homes, they become homeless and they have to they have to find a way to live and you know the the best story you can think of was you know a while back one of the news agencies did a story on this lady and this couple who had given uh, uh, a basket to the RCMP to give to the homeless because you know that's what they wanted to do because they could afford to do that but what happened is they fallen off some hard times they couldn't pay their uh, electrical bill yeah so they were back in the news saying you know now they're looking to see if they can raise some money to pay some electrical bills
It was kind of, you know, so here's a family that was giving to the community and now has fallen on hard times. Yeah. It happens. Uh, you know, you don't look at people in a different way. You just say, hey, okay, they've come upon the hard times. How can we help them? Well, bad things can happen to good people. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, you know, but again, I, I you know, I, I get it. Every, like I said, everybody's got their own opinions. Whether they're right or wrong doesn't matter. It's, it's you can listen to them and you say, okay, how are we going to proceed? Yeah. Be proactive with it. Yes.